Are you ready for a three-way? Glass on glass on glass <laughs> action, baby. If that doesn't get you moist, then sadly nothing will. <clears throat> this is actually the uh, Lee & Lee O11 Vision. They're new and improved version of the O11 Dynamic that all of us know and love. They actually uh, did a sneak peek of this back in uh, Computex of this year, and all the gamers across the world had a massive boner, which is absolutely justified. I mean, this is one good looking case. I don't think anyone can deny that. So I do have the black one here. I'm gonna take a break from the white bills for a while because I've been shoving that down your throats the past few weeks. I apologize. This is gonna be one absolute monster of a system and I can't wait to build in it. Let's begin. We're gonna be putting the best of the best specs in here. So obviously we'll be going with an RTX 4090 and we're gonna pair that beautifully with the new Intel i9 14900K processor. And for the motherboard, we're going with the Z790 Aura's Master X. This is the refreshed Z790 boards that support the new 14 gen processors out of the box so we don't have to do a BIOS flash. Whoa, this is actually a lot heavier than I thought. My Lord. Um, you know, we do have some, we do have some gray accents in here, which actually it's going to complement the gray accents from the Supreme X quite nicely. So I'm okay with this. Really the only cheapest thing in this entire build is the Windows CD key. No matter how expensive the system is, I will never ever pay full price for a Windows key and you shouldn't either, you guys. Hmm. I apologize, where was I? If you guys are building a PC, head on over to yourcdkey.com, use my code below to save your 20% off. And once you guys do buy the key, they'll send it over within a matter of minutes. So all you have to do is go into the activation settings and put it in and you're good to go. In case you guys are wondering what she bought me, it is the usual fruit platter while I'm working. Yeah. She... Oh God, there goes a dragon fruit. So if you guys caught the last O11 build I did for a subscriber, then you know that we use the brand new Corsair Titanium Dominators. And at first I wasn't really into the design. I felt like it was way too boxy, but honestly, after the build, it kind of grew on me. So I decided to go with the same sticks, but we're going to black obviously, so it matches the color scheme. So this time we're actually going with two sticks instead of four, just so we can have a much stable overclock. I wanna try and push these as far as I can. Oh, I love it. I love the matte black look. These look way nicer than the white ones. I feel like the titaniums look so much better in black, but that's just my opinion. All right, let's pop these panels off real quick. We do have thumb screws still on the side panels. You're gonna have to loosen these, unfortunately, if you wanna slide these off. So we'll start with the top. The side panel only has one screw on the top and it's magnetic, check this out. So it actually snaps in place, very cool. The front panel can be removed, but you're gonna have to remove a ton of screws just to get to it. There's this one thumb screw in the center on the bottom. There is one small one on the side of the case in the front, and there are four more in the back that you have to remove. So I'm actually just gonna keep this on while I'm building the PC. So obviously one of the biggest drawbacks of building inside this case is that you no longer have that top bracket to install three fans or a radiator, which means your only choices are the side bracket, the bottom, and then the rear exhaust. This pretty much sets you up for a very awkward fan configuration. So let's say on the bottom we go intake, which is obviously what you always wanna do when you're building inside the case. You only have an option of doing intake or exhaust for that side. If you do intake, that means you have six fans for intake and only one for exhaust. That's not ideal. You're gonna have tons of positive pressure inside the case. So let's say we flip those and make them exhaust instead. Well, now you're gonna have intake, exhaust on the side, and then you have exhaust on the left side as well. Well, there's actually one more option. We can lower the motherboard tray and make space for an additional 120 millimeter fan in the back, which is what we're gonna do. So one thumb screw here, one thumb screw in the back, and then these, I think, yeah. So three more over here in the back. Total five screws. Oh, that's so easy, okay. So in order to push this down, we have to remove this bracket on the bottom. And then I'm gonna put this back. And then the bracket goes over here. Just like that. 
that was so easy. So yeah, I prefer this a lot better just so we can use that extra slot in the back for exhaust. I like to have my exhaust fans at the highest point of the case because naturally hot air rises. It just makes the most sense. And there you have it folks. Two stacked 120 millimeter fans will go in the back here. Very nice. You know, I was wondering why is this always loose when I was touching it? And then I discovered that the entire shield is sitting on a latch system, just like the M.2 SSD. So check this out, guys. You no longer have to deal with screws. You release the latch, pop this out. Oh my God, this is it. This is the future, guys. Let's just toss in a four terabyte M.2 drive. So check this out. We got a latch system over here and a latch system for the heatsink. What? Whoever thought of this is a genius. Look at that, just snaps in place. <gasps> this one too? Oh, <laughs> what? Why am I finding out about this right now? Oh my God. <gasps> it snaps in place. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, I'm geeking out here. Just realized I probably should have installed the AIO first before I put the board inside the case. Even a seasoned builder makes mistakes, guys, okay? I am not perfect. But any whoosies, luckily Lee and Lee sent me their brand new GA2 LCD 360. This thing is actually pretty dope, okay? You can customize the display to show hardware information. You can upload your own pictures, GIFs, GIFs, whatever the hell you wanna call it or even graphics that you want. And you can even theme it with some pretty cool effects, which we'll mess around once we're done building inside the case, of course. So just like the last AIO, the fans are already installed. Thank you, Lian Lee. Oh, the back panel doesn't have any screws. It's snap off. Nice. Do I have access to the back of the motherboard though? Unfortunately, I do not. So the board has to come off. Okay, I know I'm not the only one that does that, okay? I know some of you do too. So obviously the only place we can install our AIO is on the side. Um, it doesn't make sense to do it on the bottom, even though technically I guess we could, but no, it'll, it'll be much better over here on the side. This will be set as exhaust, although you do have plenty of uh, clearance to do a push and pull configuration as well. So you can install another three 120 millimeter fans in the back because there's plenty of space. So we're gonna have three intake on the bottom, three exhaust on the right, and then we're gonna have two more exhaust over here on the back. So three intake, five exhaust, that's a lot of negative pressure, unfortunately, but I do wanna showcase the two exhaust fans over here. I'm really curious to see how the thermals are gonna be. I do wanna show you guys the back real quick. We have a magnetic SSD tray that sits on a hinge, so you can kind of fold this over to the other side so it doesn't get in the way of building a PC. And then we do have some cable ties over here that you can adjust to any height that you want. Very similar to the O11 Evo that I built in a few weeks ago. And then we got some cable ties on the bottom here to help with cable routing. And finally, you got your two SSD trays or hard drive cages over here. Unfortunately, these do not sit on a hinge. And the only way to take them out is by removing the thumb screws in the back, slide them to the top, and then pulling them out. So I bet there's a lot of you guys watching this video that don't know this tool bit exists. I discovered this about a year ago and since then it's helped me build PC so much easier. So check this out guys. This is a regular tool bit that has a Phillips screw tip at the end, right? So what happens if I put this thumb screw on the tip to try and install the AIO? It falls off, right? So check this out. With this special screwdriver bit, I put the thumb screw on top and then I pull up the sleeve and lock it in place so that it doesn't fall off. Now I can rotate it sideways. And 
and screw it in without worrying about it falling off. Pretty freaking awesome. I'll drop a link below if anyone wants to pick it up. Real quick, I do want to mention a common problem that myself and other users are experiencing when installing this specific AIO. So the USB-C cable that plugs in directly into the pump needs to go in all the way. You should hear a click when it's fully plugged in. Also, don't use any splitters with the AIO due to insufficient power. The USB cable needs to plug in directly to the USB 2 header on the motherboard. Okay, so we are officially at the halfway point, and if I'm being honest, I'm not liking how this is coming out. I don't like how those cables are visible. We no longer have the top bracket. That's normally where I would install a radiator with fans, and that would usually help cover half of these cables. Like normally, we wouldn't be able to see from here on up, but because we have nothing on the top and how low the motherboard sits in the case, you can see all this. That is not aesthetically pleasing. Even if we put the top glass piece on, you're still gonna see all this. And I just, I don't like it. I don't know. It's gonna bother the crap out of me. So I think what I wanna do is lift the motherboard back up, which will bring it up to this point. And then this will help cover about half the length of the cables because I could just run it down and behind the motherboard tray. Unfortunately, this means that we can only install one fan in the back and I'm okay with that because we're gonna be doing intake over there on the back as well. So then we'll have four intake and just three exhaust and I'll be completely happy with that. Okay, this is much better. The cables aren't as visible, but then when you look on the bottom, <laughs> those cables are visible. I guess you can't win, but you know what? I'll, I'll rewrap those cables through the middle grommet so they will look a lot cleaner. Um, overall, definitely more happy with this route. Uh, the grab cord actually will go on the top PCI slot and we'll kind of cover the bottom half of the motherboard. So any cables underneath the top PCI slot will be hidden behind the GPU. Uh, a vertical GPU mount actually would have solved this issue altogether, but Lee and Lee didn't send me a vertical GPU mount, so we're gonna have to go with the uh, traditional horizontal mount instead. Okay, a little better. Now for the power supply, I'm going with the RM1000X shift from Corsair. I'm going with the shift series specifically because I just love how the connectors are on the side of the power supply instead of the back. So if I actually plug this in the back over here, it's gonna be a lot easy for me to deal with the cable management because all the connectors are on the top. So I can use up all this extra space for cable management. This is so much more convenient. Look at this, I can plug all the cables in from the top without having to reach in from the side over here. So much easier. So before I work on the cable management, I do want to install the rest of the fans. Like I said earlier, we're doing three intake on the bottom and then one more intake on the back. Now I could just go with the regular infinity fan from Lee and Lee and just flip it backwards, but we're gonna see the circle and we're gonna see the frame over here. It just doesn't look that good. Or we can go with the reverse blade. This is basically the same exact fan, but the blades are reversed. So we still get intake, but now it's facing the front. You guys actually called me out in the last O11 XL build telling me that I put exhaust on the bottom of the case, when in fact, those were also reverse blade fans. Remember that phrase I keep saying, faces suck? This is the face of the fan, it sucks in air. Well, with this, it's gonna be faces blow. So it's gonna spin the same direction, but it's gonna blow air out. So air comes in from the back and then out from the top. These are gonna look so much nicer on the bottom as opposed to the regular fans.
I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of skeptical on how the PC would turn out without a top bracket, but it came out looking good, a little too good. Who knew there was a correlation between the amount of glass panels your PC has and how good it looks. I'm definitely digging a three-way glass design of this case. We all know that Lee and Lee are the pioneers in this world when it comes to PC case designs. Like everyone and their mothers copied the O11 design when that came out like many years ago, and they're still continuing to copy it even till today. So it would be very interesting to see how other manufacturers gain inspiration from the O11 vision. For temps, the CPU and GPU stayed very cool during idle. The CPU stayed between 33 and 45 degrees Celsius, while the GPU stayed at a constant 47 degrees while idling. Now for actual thermal benchmark, I decided to play Modern Warfare 2 in 1440p resolution for about 30 minutes or so, and the CPU peaked at 66 degrees Celsius, while the GPU didn't go past 65. Also, low-key, I was kind of clapping kids in this lobby, so I decided to stay and finish the game since I was having so much fun. For Cyberpunk Shadow of Liberty DLC, the temps were a little different since it taxes the CPU a little bit more, so we were seeing slightly warmer temps here, with the CPU peaking at 73 degrees and the GPU reaching temps of 67 degrees. All still very low temps while the system remained very silent. Also, they only sent these grommets over while I was recording the video and these basically cover the empty holes that are visible above the motherboard tray if you decide to lower the tray like we did earlier in the video. At least this way, they won't stick out like a sore thumb, but since we moved it back up, there was no need for these anymore. But I do wanna take a moment and talk about this awesome display on the AIO because it's pretty impressive the amount of things you can do on here. There are a ton of customized options given to you with the L Connect 3 software, but I'll go over a few of my favorites. On the first tab, which is the screen, you can pick from a multitude of screen effects. There's even a clock option on the second page if you don't care too much about any of the animation stuff. Uh, but here's the thing, you can add so much more to this. There are layers to the customization. So for example, let's say you pick an effect you like, on the right side, you can add more to it. With visual effect, you can select the colors you want shown, which is useful if your PC has a certain color you wanna match. In some of the other animations where the colors are already set, like twist hole, for example, you can only change the speed of the animation. And in some other cases, you have the option for both, like time tunnel. So it just varies on what effect you select. But in all of them, you do have the option of adding a watermark and text. The text option gives you four choices. The slider sensor gives you the option of showing hardware info in a form of a slide, and you can control how frequently it changes those slides on the bottom with a minimum of three seconds per slide. The next one is time. This one's pretty straightforward. You can see the date and time either in the AM or PM, and you can do custom text as well, but you can only fit six letters on each row unless you shrink the size to small. Additionally, you can customize the colors of each text by going into the layout tab. And finally, there's a watermark option, which I think is a bit pointless. This basically just adds a giant watermark over your animation. You can use the default Lee and Lee one, or you can upload your very own custom logo. You can also adjust the location of it and the opacity and take it a step further by color grading it as well. But my favorite section of this entire page is the custom image and video where you can upload your very own. But I really like Lee and Lee's approach here over other AIO manufacturers. So uploading an image is very simple. Just click on the add button and select upload. You can upload an MP4 or an image and it saves it in a library so you can easily come back to it and change it when you want. You can also do a screen capture for the image and a screen recording for the video. So let's say you have a video file that isn't in the correct format, 
like this one that I shot on my iPhone. Even though it's an MP4, it doesn't recognize it. So what I can do is I can hit play on the video itself and screen record it. Then we can go into the editor and trim the length and we can also adjust the brightness and contrast. Then when you're happy with all the edits, you can just hit import. Pretty freaking cool. The other two tabs give you complete control on the lighting effects from the AIO pump. The screen LED tab lets you customize the two LED strips on the sides and the fan LED lets you customize, well, the fans. But yeah, fantastic case to work with. I had so much fun building in here. In fact, I'm adding this to my top five PC cases of all time. It, it just made it in the top five list. Uh, if you guys want to check out the O11 Vision, I'll drop a link to it down below. The black one does retail for $140, and you can expect to pay $10 more if you want to get the white one. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more types of this content, make sure to smack a like before you head out, and make sure to subscribe because I'm just warming up. A ton of awesome PC builds coming your way. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.